Well, I've spent about a half hour cleaning and uh, everything is immaculate. Got the screw cleaned, the shaft. Whatever you do, don't sandblast or, uh, or wire brush. Just use a, a rag and uh, you can use a hand brush, but not a power brush and a little bit of a scraper, but you don't want to damage any of the surfaces. I cleaned up the brass, not real good. I ran this on the lathe uh, to get the burrs off so it'll slide easily when I make my final adjustment, you know, into here, up and down. I can put it in from either way. And then the set screw shouldn't be tightened until the very last thing so that you get your alignment and uh, no binding. Perhaps you can see now the taper. I'm not sure if, if you can or not, but that this end of the gib is smaller than the end with the X. And I've marked that end with an X because that's the way I want it to go in. And this is the screw that will push against that. And when we uh, tighten this screw, it pushes the tapered gib into a uh, a slightly new position and tightens everything up. We want to oil everything before we put it back together with nice machine oil. And then the other screw goes in this end and it's nothing more than a stop screw so that when you get your adjustment here you you would tighten this up and keep it from moving anymore. Again that could all be done with the machine uh, with this assembled on the machine in a matter of minutes if uh, you're not worried about dirt or anything like that. This machine was made in 1973. It's never been taken apart so this is its first time uh, apart and uh, very little wear. You know I'm not seeing anything here that is uh, distressing. I examined the uh, screw and it's in real good shape. Sometimes you're going to see screws that are uh, worn down so much in this area that uh, uh, they almost look like a V thread rather than an Acme thread and of course you'd even have more wear in your uh, brass nut. This is generally what would be replaced because it would be cheaper than replacing uh, this. Don't damage any of this stuff because I can't you can still get it from Atlas closing but it will be incredibly expensive. I'd hate to think what that tapered gib is and this isn't something that would be easy to make because of the taper. But probably last the life of the machine anyway. Okay, now I'm going to start uh, oiling and slowly reassembling. Wipe everything with your hand. Yeah, I'm going to wash my hands now. And uh, wipe everything with your hands in a clean uh, cloth. And then uh, oil it as you assemble it. Cleanliness is next to godliness. My hands are semi-clean. Gonna oil all of that. We're gonna get it down here in the dovetail. Same thing over here. Not too much oil or it just ends up going all over the place anyway. And I'm gonna put a little bit of oil on each side of the gib. And then rub it around good. Make sure it's on all the surfaces. This may not come apart again during my lifetime. And I will assemble this carefully and it slides so nice and smooth. And then here's the gib. I'm going to attempt to insert it. tight yet. There. Nice fit. Oh, one little tight spot there. Now I'm going to go ahead and put those screws in, at least a finger tight at this time. I have that adjusted roughly the way I want it. I'm going to make the final adjustment when it's uh, installed on the lathe and uh, I have the screw in there and go back and forth with the screw. I've got just one little tight spot there I'm not comfortable with right now. But I'm putting the brass uh, nut into place and I did put a little witness mark on there when I <clears throat> before I took it out. 
so I'm oriented it, orienting it <coughs> correctly and that as I remember it was about flush with the top. Now we can put the screw in place. It's got to hang over a little bit like that. I've oiled the screw liberally and the nut. You know it's kind of hard to get uh, oil onto that screw once the machine is uh, uh, once this is in place on the machine take the compound off once in a while and turn it upside down and get the chips out of there and lubricate that thoroughly just run that up a little ways and then I'm going to uh, oh, see how I can uh, at this time turn it because I haven't tightened that set screw right there yet that'll be one of the last things that I do This notch here lines up with the uh, Gib adjusting screw and then I'm going to stick the two cap screws in there. Everything's clean. Put it down in there yonder like shop dog man would say. And then these can be snugged up. Sometimes I'm not sure if I'm on camera. Do you like these Bondus brand uh, ball end uh, wrenches? I sure do. I gotta tell a quick story about those. My brother was a teacher also in a machine shop and he had a whole set of these uh, Bondus, other brands too I suppose. They call them a, a ball end, but uh, you can see how they allow you to, to use them a little bit out of uh, alignment. Well, one of the kids who wasn't too smart, it was a full grown man, it was a night class. He came up to my brother sometime during the hour and said, Mr. Peterson, his name was Peterson too, I did a big favor for you. Oh, what's that? He said, a lot of your Allen wrenches were damaged and round it off on the end. I ground them all off nice and even for you. Oh. I've tightened up these two cap screws. I hope I'm not going into too much detail. And now we want to put this on. Like... Get it backwards like that. But of course it goes into this first, like that. And we uh, have a, uh, okay, like that. We're going to put the Woodruff key in. I like to slant those a little bit and then we're ready for our crank handle. Oh, Woodruff key came out. The hurrieder I go, the behinder I get. Like that. And I'll put the nut on there, snug it up. And then I'm going back to the machine. Forgot to show you a couple other steps. I've tightened up this nut with my socket 9 16 Now we're going to tighten this set screw that uh, locks the brass nut in place. I'm just going to snug that up nice. You see those uh, Bondus brand uh, ball uh, will allow you to get in there at an angle. And then we've got one set screw right here to tighten up also. Also one thing I want to point out. On your little knurled knob here that allow you to uh, zero your collar out, there's a little brass pin in there. 
make sure you don't lose that. If you lose that and it drops out and you don't know what one belongs in there, your little uh, set screw will cause marks on your uh, collar there and then it isn't easy to turn it around. The kids would lose those. I had to buy them by the gross or just make them out of a uh, brazing rod which was actually a little too hard of a material but it worked. Now I'm truly going over to the machine. The compound is mounted back on the lathe and I've taken a big screwdriver and I, I backed off the locking screw on the back and then I Snug this up just a little bit. I did that by trial and error several times until I got it just the way I wanted it and felt like a good uh, fit, not too hard, not too easy, not too easy. Someone asked me, well, aren't there specifications for that, torque specifications? No, it's all just good judgment and uh, by feel. Now, some people uh, will tighten the gibs up temporarily for a certain job if they don't want it to move more or less lock locking this and then they had to be readjusted uh, after that but these really are easy to adjust compared to the other ones which uh, are not tapered remember it's about the same thing for adjusting them on your bridge board now I'm going to do the same thing to the cross slide but I'm gonna do it off camera because you know it takes a half hour or more actually more than that including all the cleaning I'll probably spend about 90 minutes on it but I think there's nothing new to be learned there other than possibly how to take this apart and I never have had that apart but I don't see it being too different than the others uh, than the compound I do have the original manual for this 5900 series of uh, closing lathe this is Tubal Kane signing out for now saying Merry Christmas and so long for now.